Hey boo, hey boo, come on in, have a seat. Today is gonna be a little bit different because I'm gonna be sharing my screen a bit for my version of uh, fashion show and tell because today we're gonna talk about handbags. Y'all know I said this before, well, if you're new here, welcome, my name is Carolyn Gray. I typically post videos on Tuesdays and Fridays, but I was a little late this week, so hello Wednesday viewers, okay? Um, and I usually talk about fashion, all things fashion, and showcasing my entrepreneurship life living here in New York City, because your girl is busy, all right? Um, but today, I'm gonna be discussing handbags, handbag trends, what they're saying in the media about certain handbags because I've admitted in the past I'm not really a handbag girl. I'm a shoe girl. I don't I don't need to buy no more clothes this year. I don't need to buy any more shoes and just to take it back really quickly to those who have watched uh, my recent haul and I asked y'all a couple of should I return or keep? Y'all can see that these did not get returned. They're here because I figured out how I'm going to be wearing them. It was just it, it threw me for a little loop, you know, it threw, it threw your girl for a loop, but I figured it out and they're staying for sure. But um, anyway, I don't know that much about bags and I have a couple of friends who work within the um, luxury retail, retail space working for brands like Louis Vuitton, Fendi, Dior. And, you know, I've been picking their brain about different things about, you know, my interest in ba buying bags this year and investing and understanding who I am as a bag girl. Cause I know who I am as a shoe girl and a clothing girl, but like sometimes I get a little confused when it comes to bags and like, I don't know what to get. So I figured let's do a little bit of research on what they're saying the trends are for this year. Because truth be told, I don't want to necessarily get a trendy bag, but I do want to understand what they're saying about bags overall. And then I'm going to do another deep dive into the classic bags that are out there. So I figured, let's take it back to my old job. <laughs> so y'all, I was like an intern for like a summer, but I was a paid intern. I was the only paid intern in that space, okay? At Elle Magazine when I was in college. So I remember doing one of these trend lists for Josie when he was the creative director. And I was like, what is Elle Magazine saying? Because... I usually look at Elle, Harper's Bazaar, and Vogue magazine whenever I want to see what's going on in the um, the fashion magazine world. So let's take a look at Elle because last month, or actually two months ago right now, because we're in February, and in December, they put out this article, the 10 biggest 2023 bag trends to shop right now. Now, first of all, you won't tell me what to do. I'm going to look at it, and then we're going to shop. But what are they saying about these trends? So the first thing on the list is belt bags and I have immediate regret because I did sell this Gucci belt bag that I had in the past, but I don't know. They're saying that you want to go hands free, be really chic. I mean, I like, I like the aesthetic of a belt bag, but to be honest, I like, I like it when it's wrapped around the front of your chest rather than just around the waist, because I feel that it's super limiting and the, the styles that they're highlighting it can only really be worn on the waist comfortably because if you do it on the front, it'll kind of flap up and down. But you know what? I like that they're showcasing this Dior men's version because I actually, in cr Christmas time, we did a, the shopping vlog together, right? I was taking more of a liking to the men's styles of everything, especially Fendi. Men's Fendi, I was really into and also Dior, Fen um, Dior men's the year before I was looking at saddlebags from them but then they sold out on the one that I wanted so it takes me a long time to commit to a bag but I, I like the idea of a belt bag but not in this like super simple like hanging pocket situation I think that's a little bit limiting on the style whereas you can get one that can sling over the shoulder or chest and you can also wear that around your waist if you wanted to. I'm not big on a belt bag that's limited to the waist. Um, but that's interesting that that came back. Okay, super size is still a thing and that YSL um, moment, honestly, it looks heavy as shit. I, I'm, my, I have broad shoulders and they can carry it, but I don't want to. That's too damn heavy for a shoulder. Um, but I do love a big old bag. 
because all the things can just get lost in and it's perfect for the gym situation. I like this Acme Studios, but $470 for basically a, a cloth. To, see, this is why I have issues with bags. It's the pricing that gets me. When it's canvas or a painted on cloth material and you want to charge me upwards of $250, I'm going to look at you a little funny because it's like, child no i have bags so i have canvas bags for noir bud that i charge like 25 dollars for and them things last a really long time and they have a little velcro closure but anyway here i go here i go now i actually really love this boy scrunchy jumbo nylon bag nylon for 12.95 and then you want to put these little I, I can really see how the shoulder strap will create marks on my shoulder. I love the concept. I like how it scrunches at the mouth there. But that strap, let's actually dive in. I want to see this bone up a little bit. I want, do they have a photo of it on the body? No, they don't. So does this is this supposed to live just on your arm, like on the on the fold of your elbow? Is this the same size? Okay, they don't have any photos of it on the body. And this is why you have to see some things in person so you can see how it looks as far as the proportion alongside your body. I really like the black one. Is that leather? Yeah, calfskin, 1750. Oh my gosh. Listen, I get it though. I get it. It a lot of these things, it's it's all about the hands that made them and i get that or the materials the, the hand stitching like i totally get it but i don't know girl i don't know i don't know but i, I love me a huge bag so that's something to think about hard shell hmm this seems really particular structured silhouettes make handheld clutches feel new again okay Oh, I like this little um, Simone Rocha mini A crossbody bag. She's cute. She's cute. Let's open that. I like a little sculpture handbag moment because it definitely makes a statement. And it's super cute. Oh, it's a little small thing on the body. It's a, it's a, it's a tiny bag. Mini bag. Okay. I mean, oh, and it has cloth on the inside. I like the aesthetic. You know who also has like really structured beautiful bags like this in like a pearl um, uh, uh, colorway? Brandon Blackwood. They're like the adult women's version of a lunchbox and I'm here for that actually. Eight Other Reasons mini purse. She's cute. 168 at Revolve. Now that, 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 that makes sense to me. And she's popular. Okay, I can see why she's... Oh, she's actually 139 Even better. She is actually really cute, and I love this color. I have several questions. And this is, this is why I have to see items like this in person. I need to understand how my hand is going to fit. Obviously, I wear a lot of rings. And this is something that I think about when I'm thinking about bags. When I wear rings like this, they're, they're large. They protrude out. Is my hand going to get stuck as I'm trying to look for my lip gloss in it? Can I actually fit a phone in it? Can I actually fit a, a card holder in it? You know, what is this opening giving? It's beautiful sculptured, but the use of it is not for every day. This is definitely a, you know, black, black tie cocktail event situation. This is... For a really beautiful outfit and this is the ultimate accessory I see it and I get it I'm actually really into the sculpture bag Valentino rhinestone embellished V logo clutch I'm sick of this pink y'all know I don't like color a lot overall but like I'm sick of this pink they own it though I mean listen I'm not even gonna open it up I'm not even gonna open it up because $3,900 $3,900. I can already tell this is going to be. Look how tiny this thing is. 
I could already tell that this is going to be really hard to sway me into a bad girl. She can barely hold a thought, let alone a card holder. Hmm. All right, all right, that's fine. I don't know, I don't know. I, I do, so I know that I need, I don't need anything. Let's be clear, because I want to be really honest with y'all and transparent. I don't need a damn thing, but I would like to invest in a few different handbags. I would like an evening bag, because I don't really think the ones that I have are appropriate or a bit too they're a bit too large um i want an evening bag i want a a classic everyday bag two of them to be completely honest and then i want an over the top like i want an over a, an over the top artsy bag that i can wear every day if i felt like it so anyway okay so they're saying this trend is called drippy Okay, it's giving like Paco Rabanne. Okay, think flapper dress made into a handbag. Icicles made of crystals. Okay, what we saw a lot of last year, basically. Okay, I can dig it. This is really cool ideas for an evening bag. Ooh, is it Cara or Cara? I was actually looking at these bags last year because they were on sale on some random website I saw that was not US based. But this is what I mean by like an evening bag, something that's funky and cool, but appropriate for a cocktail event, for a gala, something that is a little bit of a, a conversation starter. And she's on sale. She's a little tote, but I actually want her to be a little bit smaller for what I'm looking for, but she's really cute. Then retro feet, she, ooh. I like drippy. Wait a minute, I think Drippy could be a consistent trend, a consistent situation. I don't think she's trendy. Ooh. I like the movement on her. So for this, like I get it. You know, we have the crystals dripping down. We have the lights hitting it in the most perfect way. You know, $395 for something like that, or $495 for the for the Kara bag. I get it. I get it, especially because it's for special occasions or just like to top your your look off. You know, I, I totally get it. I don't know. Like, oh, and these are smaller brands. OK, what else do they have? Zara beaded fringe bag for $50. I don't like this one. It looks like an afterthought. But I like this whole drippy, fringy aesthetic. And I feel like that speaks to me and my personal style, to be completely honest. Like, I see this actually playing really well with my style overall for years to come. So, okay, not loving the, the belt bags. Not loving that. I love a slouchy, slouchy belt bag. Um, big bags, yes, but not like in random materials. Like if you're going to be charging an, a certain amount of money, I need leather. I need a certain skin. I need me like metal on there. I need gold and a boat attached. Anyway, um, moving on. Utilitarian pockets. Okay. Okay. I'm into it. Who doesn't love a pocket? I mean, don't we all get excited when we're wearing a dress and we find out it has pockets? Like, why does it excite us so much to be able to understand that we can put our lipstick or a little dollar or, or, or some candy in random pockets that to the other eye, they can't see it, but we know that we have it. Something about pockets, y'all, is something about pockets that gets everybody going. Okay, coach, charter, crossbody. I don't like this sort of... Um, I don't like this combination of the pocket bag. No. It looks like the little Prada pockets that came with the with the um the lug boots, the tire boots that they had. And I don't know, I don't like it. Michael Kors Elliott logo messenger bag. I'm surprised that Al would put this on their list, but I guess maybe it was an advertising situation. Moving along, obviously I don't like it. Now the Fendi Acid Green Nylon Baguette. Okay, so we're gonna pay double time for all the little bags attached to the bag. <laughs> Forty two hundred dollars. Okay, um, it's nylon. 
I like the green. I don't, okay, she's not a fan of the pocket bag. Keep the pockets inside the bag for moi. That's what I'm gonna say there. Um, yeah, we're gonna keep the we're gonna keep the pockets in the bag. I'm not I'm not really with this whole thing. And also I feel like that's a lot of fumbling too. Oh, I don't I will never remember the combination of pockets that I use to put my Metro card in, to put a, a, a SD card in, to put um a little hand lighted. I'm gonna be looking in every bag for the same thing that I thought was in that pocket was all over in this pocket. It just seems like a little bit of mayhem to me. So I'm going to keep the pockets inside the bag and I appreciate them. Um, I appreciate them trying. So the next one that they have here is a top handle. I can get into a top handle handle. She's a lady bag. You know how I like to say I have my lady shoe, my little, you know, my little pump. I feel like top handles are the lady bag. This is nice. Maria Olive, Olivier or Oliver Michelle lizard top handle. Okay, get into the skins. I mean, I'm not a blue, I'm not a baby blue girl. It gives me ashy. Um, sorry for those of you that like baby blue. It's just my preference. It's just my preference. The Gucci Bamboo 1947 uh, mini. She's $3,400. Is, is the handle made of a very special wood that we shouldn't have cut down in the first place? Bamboo wood? Like, is it a specific, like... I know, I know. I'm being that person. I'm actually annoying myself in this process because it's obvious. We're investing. And if we do buy certain pieces, especially handbags, like the resale opportunity is really, it's really high. Like working with brands like Fashion File, like I'm, I'm understanding the importance of purchasing a handbag that if you ever wanted to, for whatever reason, you can resell and get more for what you pay for. I get the vibe of the Gucci Bamboo 1947. I really do. I don't know if, okay, they have it in the black, they have it in the green, orange, mm, ivory. Okay. Oh, this blue is interesting. Oh, wow. She's pretty. She's a puncher. She punches out at you. Okay, I'm digging it. I'm digging it. I get it. Um, Luar Ostrich Embossed hand, Small Bag. Now, I I love their website, too. And I like that it comes with a crossbody as well, just in case you want that. But to be honest, I feel if I want a top handle bag, I would want it to be able to fold down whenever I want it to. I don't want it where... I like it's the hand the handle is going to be up the whole time hitting against me if I am wearing it crossbody you know if I don't want to wear if I don't want to hold in my hand the whole time I want to have the option of doing a crossbody and it not getting in the way too much of what I'm doing because as a New Yorker I'm constantly on the go I'm always running around my arms are always moving all over the place and I feel like a stiff top handle will get on my nerves um, next the next one is chainmail and that's giving Y2K vibes. It's giving nighttime or they're saying casual lunches, girl. Okay, I mean I get it. I'm not I'm not mad at it. a little bit of edge. But this Benedetta Bru cheese if I said it wrong, please help me and tell me how to pronounce it. But I love the brand overall. But this particular Ursula Crystal Mesh shoulder bag style is very particular. I feel that that's something that I would get kind of tired of over time. Like I don't I don't see it having a lot of longevity unless my personal style was that of someone who wears a lot of draped, elongating, like really minimalistic, simple clothing, but has like a really strong effect. This is something I could see a person wearing like that. Someone who wears like really structured bangles and beautiful ear pieces and things that just kind of hang around the shoulders. Something like this, I can see this withstanding the test of time in that particular closet. Personally, for me, not so much. This Whiting and Davis Twisted Handle Hobo Bag. No, thank you. Okay. Brandon Blackwood's rhinestone handle bag. 
So I saw it at the, at Saks in a previous video. I, I covered it. It is heavy, thick, and gorgeous in person. If you're doing chain mail and this is something that you were looking into, highly recommend. I really like these bags from him. Like really and truly. I would personally take off the large tag on the side just because I don't like too much logo in my face. Um, but this is gorgeous in person and the price point is just, it makes sense to me and it's super, it's a weight to it. I love I love the chain mail thing. I actually really like it and I feel like that's something that is yes trending right now but it's a classic style. Pa pa Paco Roban. Is it Roban or Robain? Again, if you know how to pronounce it, tell me. Um that I love those bags. So this is right on the money. So the next one is extreme minimalism. Okay, I'm listening. Oh boy, yes, Al, give me the information. Okay, Jacqueline Lee Carinho flap shoulder bag. She's cute. So yeah, this is what I'm saying when it comes to like something that's super classic. This is what I'm interested in. This is super clean cut. Oh my god. There's there's no like you would never know what year you got this in. It goes well with so many different things. I'm into this and I'm actually really into the size. I would even go up a little bit more as far as like sizing if they had a medium option. But I love something super sleek like this. Little Lifner Minimal. Oh, she's nice. I don't like that color. Mm. She's nice though. I get it. Okay, Reprojects. This, this brand is from the Netherlands. And I dig it. Very minimalistic. Very chic. I did not know that they had it in this color. She's really pretty. She's giving. She's giving that pop of color. I really like their band bags i want to see them in person to see the sturdiness of the leather because it looks so thin online but also yummy at the same time something like this to me this particular trend it, it's it's not a trend this is an ongoing classic situation so going on to the next floral groundbreaking um y'all i'm not I, I don't know what oh god oh okay if you're giving floral and you're giving and you're showing me a comme de garçon flower shaped glossy bag i'm into it i'm really into it actually she's adorable i can actually there's a few of my friends that i know for a fact will love this she's cute and i'm not mad at the price either because comme de garçon i would have assumed it would be a lot more but she's really cute okay saint laurent jamie chain bag Mm. you know what i would prefer 3d there we go yeah that's that's what i'm that's what i'm realizing i'm the floral thing i'm i think the 3d aspect will make it like really punchy for me but um this is <laughs> this is giving southern bells grandmother's curtains it's nice Moving right along, Anne Fontaine mini scarlet bag. I read that backwards. She's a really beautiful blue. Okay, maybe I wouldn't like it in 3D. I don't know. I don't know. The the floral thing, I feel like florals are really pop. They're always a classic thing, no matter what, what year you're going into. Every spring, summer, there's a floral situation, and there's just different takes on it. But I am not into a literal floral movement. I'm into abstract floral. I think that's what I feel about this whole thing. I'm not a literal floral girl. This is something to me that you would invest in and then be mad at it later on, unless you are a literal floral aesthetic liking person. That's your thing and that's your thing. But anyway, child, yeah, I'm not, I'm not doing the floral thing. Uh, sequins and rhinestones. Okay, so honestly, Drippy, chainmail, sequence and rhinestones. I feel like it lives in its own. This is this is the bubble. That's the same bubble. But that baguette is everything. That baguette is everything. Oh, long gone. Okay, I like this little hobo bag. She's cute. That's something that actually would like, no one would really know what the brand is unless you know, then you know. 
it, that to me, I, I, I like that idea because I don't like, a, like I said, I don't really love a low gold up bag unless it's, I really love the Fendi, I think Jacquard print um, baguette. That's something I actually have on my wish list. That is the only thing that I believe has a monogram aspect all over a bag that I'm into. Otherwise, I'm not, I don't want the name on it. But this is really beautiful. The little Fendi Nano Baguette Charm. She's cute. She can fit one single thought in there. <laughs> no. For eleven fifty, Like, I love Fendi overall, but like... Y'all can have fun with this little baby bag. Because this, not for that money. Okay, JW. Yeah. She's cute. This is really cute. Oh, she's 129 Okay. Listen, I get it. I'm going to be spending a pretty penny on the investment bags. And I totally know that that's going to happen. But if it is something that is this price and this small... I would prefer it. Like I, I think it's gorgeous. At one twenty nine, this is really dope for like an everyday, like not everyday, um, an evening bag moment. I really love this. Oh, she's cute, and they have different colors and and textures. <gasps> okay, no, I don't like that. I don't like that. Oh, the green is cute. She's cute. I don't know where it cut off, but anyway, I was saying I really do appreciate when magazines do trend lists like this because especially if it's an area of fashion that I'm not comfortable with I would I'm curious to see what they're saying about you know handbags overall and and you know what I actually connect to let's see if there are any more that is the last one that's the last one so at the end of the day you know, can you tell I'm nervous about getting into the bag space as far as being a consumer of it more so? I just, it is a scary thing because you, you want to make sure you buy a bag that you love, that you really feel connected to, that can go with so many things. And it comes easy to me when, it, when, it, when it's like a clothing item or a shoe. Like I can really accessorize and imagine so many looks with those items but when it comes to a bag it's harder so it's like i have like some of the classic bags i have this is not a classic i believe this is a trendy situation if, if i'm not mistaken i don't even know the names of these things oh my god i have so much to learn but this was my first chanel bag that i bought myself in 2019 she is very vintage looking, which that was one thing I did love about it. It mixes the caviar and the quilt um, aesthetic. And I like the fact that, you know, she basically had the two handles, a top handle, you see a top handle that is bendable, won't get in my way if I do choose to wear it crossbody. Um, and I liked how the SA taught me how to wear it like this. But I really love this bag and it made a lot of sense for me to get it at that time. Another bag that I wear to death is my Bottega um, Intricato pouch. I wear this so much and I don't, and I'm not tired of it. I'm really not. But for an evening bag, she's a little big. For an evening bag, she's a little too square, too serious. Um, and then I have bags like this. And these were, most of these bags I think I purchased during my time at Neiman's, which was a very short lived time. So I got them on discount as a as an employee. This was one bag that I bought on really super duper sale. Like I probably got this for like I think 300 or something like that if I'm not mistaken. And I love the color of it. So when I say I want something that's a little artsy and out there, something that has many colors or has a certain abstract design on it that's not, you know, a classic thing, but it speaks to my eye for art or my eye for different designs. So but this can't really go with a lot, you know? It, it, I made it go with a lot because it just flowed with what I was doing at the time, but I feel like some of my bags are a little restrictive on how I can wear them. For example, even though this is very classic and vintage looking, this Gucci bag, this actually did not come with it, so. This is a really stiff top handle. I don't, I cannot get comfortable with her. She's really dope. She's beautiful. She's actually menswear. 
I, I can't get that comfortable with her. So I added a Proenza strap to her, which is cute and it is a great talking point. But, you know, I, as much as I love this bag and this was a gift from Carlos, I don't wear it as much because she's a little uncomfortable. I have to be, I, I don't, I can't be shopping or getting extra things the day that I wear this. She is a part of my look. And that is the only thing that I'll have my hands dealing with for that time. And that's it. So she's a limiting bag. So I want something that is not limiting, that can go with so many different things. Um, and that's why I need an everyday bag and an evening bag that I really like that JW Pui, Pui, Pui bag. She was cute. I really like the aesthetic of that bag. It's like, you know, a little moon shape or crescent shape. And recently I got these for Christmas, this one and uh, the, the colorful one. And I love the simplicity of the shape, but I love the fact that it has this print. And I feel like a black and white zebra print will never go out of style. A beautiful beaded bag will never go out of style because it's, it's about the, the quality of it. I think when it comes to selections like this, you know, but we'll see we'll see i did tell my friend that works at fendi that you know in a couple of weeks like i'll be hitting her up to shop with her and her essays because she's she's actually management she's she's actually management she's not an essay but she's gonna help me understand the uh the ins and outs of the fendi bag so i can you know figure out what i'm going to get from fendi because i do want a baguette um, for sure, but this is such a weird space for me. Like this is something that I don't really know how to talk about much. So love L magazine. Um, yeah, I love that. I love my time there. I love how they kind of break certain trends down for people. And I do, I like a lot of the trends. I'm not in love with the, the belt bag thing. I'm not. I don't like the floral either because it's too literal. It's very, like it would, that's why Miranda Priestly got really annoyed when she heard the term florals because she knew that that girl meant literal florals. She knew she did not mean abstract florals and that's why she said groundbreaking. And to this day, I've never, I never, like her character, I, I get it. I get her and I love that shit. But anyway, yeah. All right. We're done. We're done. This is, thank you for tuning in. Let me know what y'all tell me. This is what I actually, this is what I really want to know. Y'all tell me what are some of your favorite handbags? What are some things that you have on your wish list or what's something that you've purchased as a bag that you don't regret? Not in the slightest. Like it is your, your best handbag purchase like drop all the comments below because i really want to know i want to make really um smart decisions when buying a handbag or two this year because it's just so, they're so expensive for a fact for an item and i don't want to regret it in any sense um because i'm too grown to be regretting purchases you know what i'm saying especially a handbag purchase. like that's a lot so I want to know what is my YouTube family thinking when it comes to handbags and we'll expand on this a little bit more. We'll do some shopping vlogs. We'll do some unboxings. We'll do some more like classic research videos. But yeah, I want to know what your thoughts are. On. I, I want to know what your thoughts are on this whole topic. So I'll see y'all Friday. Let me know your thoughts. I'll see you later. Be safe and stay warm and cozy, my darling. Bye.